السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرته الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة المتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكة مصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد معاذ بن جود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم Before we begin inshallah we are going to pray one very beautiful Dhu Sharif and the benefit of reciting this Dhu Sharif it has been recorded by Muhaddithun if a person recites this very particular Dhu Sharif once then the angels will keep writing good deeds in his book of deeds for 1000 days <coughs> repeat after me Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Jazallahu Anna Sayyidana Wa Mawlana Muhammadan Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Ma huwa ahlu As you can see Mawlana Muhammad Kaleem Sahib He's not feeling well so Inshallah I'll be talking For a few months inshallah in front of you May Allah subhanahu wa give every believer shifa min ajila not only the physical shifa but also the spiritual shifa. Looking around the society, one thing we notice the modern age, the modern time is People are living a life, running around, trying to hold on to dunya. Now, if someone was to mention and try to describe the modern life we live in, okay, the first thing we're going to say is a modern life. It's a very fast life. It's a very complex life and of course one thing which is very common we all say it's a very busy life. This is how we would describe this modern era, this modern age. But at the same time what we see is this life has become a very sinful life for many. And as soon as we step outside the house, we see many temptations, many traps laid in front of us. We are diverted from the true path of Deen very easily in this modern life because of the pride we have, the lust, the greed all these things we have we carry in our hearts and due to this very easily we divert ourselves from the true path of the, <coughs> the Sirat al-Mustaqeem and that is why we see that there's sin in every direction where we turn to in our society, it is very unlikely that we will not see sin in front of you, in various forms. And when we are told to stop sinning, we find it very difficult. Because so engrossed in the dunya, in committing the sin, trying to feel the pleasure of committing the sin, that when we are told, brother or sister, this is haram, we find it very difficult to abstain from that sin.
and especially if you look at the, the lives of the Oliya of the past, not only Oliya, the general public in the past, when they were told that the act they are committing is haram, they try their best to go to extreme in order to avoid the haram act. But here, we go extreme towards the extreme side in order to commit the haram. If we can't commit a sin in the house, we go outside. If we can't commit a sin in the back streets, we're going to go to another place, another town, another city, in order to fulfill your desires, to follow your ego, and to feel the pleasure of committing the sin. But one thing we need to know is we are extremists. We need to be extremists. Now it says Muslims are extremists. I say yes. We are extremists. Extremists in what? We are extremists in eradicating, removing from our lives what evil. Okay? But one thing we need to be aware of that devil is always there. He's going to try and trap you. Okay? Oh, you're keeping your beard. What will people say to you? First of all, first thought will come to their minds, what will your wife say to you? Huh? And then when they come to the masjid, wow, why are you coming to the masjid for? You've got friends outside. You know, just chill, just relax. You can pray at home. There's no need for you to come to the masjid. All these thoughts come from the devil, from the shaitan who is an open enemy. And the worst thing in this age is what we can see now in our hands, modern technology. It's Twitter, YouTube, Skype has made it easy for us to communicate with other people. And has changed our world we live in. Sorry if you're an Android user. But the thing is, I'm not saying abstain from these things, but the thing is, use it wisely. Okay, it is going to be very difficult. If you're parents, it's literally going to be impossible for you to stop your children going on the internet. It's the way of modern day life. Yeah, they have to use internet, they have to use technology for their school purposes or college or university purposes. But one thing, brothers, is if you are part of any of these social medias, then use it wisely. I've heard many cases okay, that the whole family are in chaos. Why? Because this very young child, I'm listening, some brothers can remember, we listened to radio yesterday, how a child was murdered because of uh, internet. So you have to be very careful. And, you know, sometimes, even in namaz, you come into namaz, what do you see? As soon as Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everyone's looking, going to their phones. Okay, one WhatsApp message look like, for example now, we've got a few loads of messages here. It happens. Okay, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, Yes, all these, these things are happening and it has an effect in our understanding of things. Especially when we say Allahu Akbar, instead of trying to concentrate and trying to remove all these thoughts in our minds, what do you have? All these thoughts in our minds. Constantly reading the mass, oh no, I need to text someone. Okay? Even once people are doing wudu, in one hand they're doing gargling, on the other hand they're texting. This is a state. But sometimes we need to detox ourselves. Not physically, I'm talking spiritually. Switch off the mobile phone for a couple of days and see a tremendous change in your thinking. Okay, we saw away from nature. 
Because remember, the, I think the the parents and parents here used to go out on the fields, okay, making dams, barbecue. Nowadays, all these children they glue to the screen. Okay, let them explore the world. Let them explore the nature. The old lady around would go out to look at nature animals. In order to understand the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. The jamal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these things have gone because of this. Okay. But anyway, inshallah, a very interesting story I want to share with you. And this very particular person, he wasn't an alim. He wasn't a scholar, a teacher, a lecturer. He was just a normal person like me and you. His name was Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Miski alayhi rahmatullah. A very great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him a great rank. Now the reason is because why was he called Miski from the word musk? Because he always smelled nice. People smelled musk coming from his body. He wasn't a word at, at the time as such. Okay, he wasn't a scholar. People didn't know him. Who he was? Just a person off the street. So people once in, in, inquired and asked him, so why is it that you always smell good? Do you have a perfume shop? So Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Misti radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, By Allah, for years, I've never used perfume, never touched perfume. But the reason why you smell this good fragrance from me is because of a story which I would like to share with you. A very inspiring story. He said that once, after work, I was walking the streets of Baghdad as Sharif. Very narrow streets. Those who've been to Middle East probably have seen them narrow streets. So I was on my way to my house, to my home. When on, my, on the way, I met a beautiful lady. I was young. I was handsome. I'm not talking about myself, okay? And I was young. I was not married. And she knew about me. So now this woman, she was very beautiful, very attractive. Okay? So she tried to lure me, trap me, seduce me. So how? She said, I need your help. Can you come to my house? I need a hand. Now she was a very rich person. And I went to the house, a very beautiful mansion. I thought probably she might need a hand with some housework or something. And then I entered the house. As soon as I entered the house, she asked the servant to lock the door. And then she said, follow me. She took me to the bedroom, and now I knew what were her intentions. It was for me to commit haram act. And I thought to myself, the doors are locked. There's no one here. How can I escape from this? Because he was a known person, but he had a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we like. He was conscious of the fact that Allah is watching him. And that is why one of those individuals who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be a man, rajulun da'atum ra'atun dhatu man sabin wa jamalin faqala inni akhafu Allah. That man who was called, seduced by a very beautiful lady of Jamal, 
But he denied her, saying, Inni akhafullah, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those individuals who say that, they will be under the, the shade of arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah. Now, because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had to plan something, an escape. So he said, okay, before you do anything, I need to answer the call of nature. I need to go to the washroom. Show me where the bathroom is and to relieve myself and then you can do whatever you want. She agreed. She asked the servant, take him to the washroom. And what happened? Okay, again, as I told you, he was trapped in the house. He couldn't get out. So he went to the, uh, the bathroom and what did he do? He relieved himself. He got his excrement and smeared it all over his body. The impurity he took in his hand and smeared it literally on his body. Okay, again, why? He went to extreme in order to avoid haram. Okay, now what happened? He went into the bathroom and then when he came out, the lady saw this mad person smeared with impurity. Never she saw that before in her life. First time. But he had the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew this is the only way she would run away from me. And then both the servant and the woman, they went out on the street and they called out, there's a bad man in the house. There's a crazy man in the house. He's insane. He's lost his sanity. But this Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, he thanked Allah. That Allah helped him and protected him from committing haram. Now what happened that night? When this um, young man, he was free to go to his house. He went to sleep and he saw a beautiful dream. One of the narration is Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came to him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you act so much. <laughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered me to walk one of my wings on your body. From that day when he woke up from that very moment, he said to the people, oh people, that is why you see this good fragrance coming off my body is because of the touch of Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. It was nothing. He wasn't a scholar. He did, it wasn't a karama, a miracle he performed. Only he avoided haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with this rank. Something which we can do in this age. Don't think you can only become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're able to find the air, if you can walk on water, if you can fast for many days. Nah. In this age, okay, what Allah demands us is to abstain from haram. Absent from haram. Now, how would you change your life? What things we need to do in our life in order to become God fearing, in order to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First and foremost is knowing the sin and to regret. Be remorseful. <coughs> If someone is committing a sin and he doesn't know it's a sin, then he will not abstain from that sin and he won't be remorseful, he won't move over. And that is why the ulama kiram they have stated, not only it is necessary for you to understand the rulings of Sharia, i.e. what things break your salah, what things break your wudu, okay, the rules of zakah and siyam and hajj, the rights of parents, the rights of neighbors, but also it is found necessary to know things that will destroy your soul, your heart. Ostentation, pride, kibr, riyah, sum'ah, shuhra, 
dunya. All these diseases of the heart we need to understand and also need to know the remedy, the cure for those diseases. This is follow. There is no point giving zakah, giving sadaqah to the masjid. At the same time, you want people to know, MashaAllah, I have given 2,000 pounds for the new masjid. Shukra, fame. So first thing is to know the sin you're committing is haram. This comes in such gatherings. When you come to such gatherings, you are told, this is halal, this is haram. Once you know something is haram, you're going to regret it. You're going to feel remorseful. Nadama. And then, second step is to stop immediately indulging in that sin. Don't say, inshallah, when I get married, I will avoid the sin. Or once I start work, I'll start committing, I mean, I will dedicate my life to deen and avoid sin. No. As soon as you know the act you're doing is haram, don't let the shaitan whisper in your ear, you've got a long life. Wait till the end. When you are told by the doctor, you've only got a few moments left, then do you told that? No. That is one of the traps of shaitan. You never know when you will pass away. And this is one of the tricks of the shaitan. They whisper in your ear, in the heart, you've got a long life. Chill, relax. Do you talk about the end? When you saw, when your beard becomes white, when you need a walking stick to walk, that is when you do talk about. No, no, you say energetic. Okay, you can relax. You know, can enjoy the life. Okay, this is one of the tricks of the shaitan. And then what you do, the third step is to repent sincerely. Ya Allah, from this moment. From this very second, I repent, I turn towards you, Ya Allah, give me the ability to feet not to go back to that sin. Sincere Toba. Not just, you know, slapping your cheeks, Toba, Toba, Toba. Huh? Not like that. Sincere Toba. So now from that, after that, what you need to do is to avoid the paths that lead you to that sin. What you need, every individual knows what things or what paths that lead him or lead them to sin. You should avoid those paths. And once you know that, inshallah you'll be avoiding sin. Is it because of your friends? Then change your friend circle. Okay? And defend those who are pious. And unfortunately, we live in such an, an age to find pious friends is very rare now. Unfortunately. Like in the society, there are more fre impious friends, those who are indulged in haram, who want to do fraud, do crime, who want to deal on the streets, drink alcohol, consume alcohol, okay? These things are very common now. And very rare you find in the youngsters who come to Salat al-Fajr and say, Brother, why were you not attending, why are you not attending Salat al-Fajr? Unfortunately. But we should try and befriend those who are pious, if you can. And one of the reasons why many youth, many youngsters, they go towards haram, it's because they're bold. Look at all of you now, mashallah, so excited. No, 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 mashallah is good. Okay? I'm saying it's boredom when you're bored, nothing to do. You finished work, you're at home, you're not married, you've got no children, mashallah, you've eaten, now what, do, what should I do? The shaitan, okay, okay, whispers in your ears. You're bored, man, why just go out with your friends? Go, just relax. A couple of hours. And then, step by step, you're gone. Boredom. You're bored. You get nothing to do. That's why you always have, you have to engage yourself in something. Worldly or religious acts. 
Okay, so you should spend your time wisely. Go to the gym with your friend, a couple of hours. At least you get tired, come back home, you can sleep. It's better to go to a gym rather than go out and chill with your friends and do the haram acts. Okay. At least you're looking after your body, which is also part of the. Um, reading books again. Can I ask you a question? Okay. If you have, if you read a book today, a religious book, put your hands up. Anyone? One of the few students here. That's up. But generally speaking, if you've read a book, okay, put your hands up. Mashallah. You see the state. Okay. We've put the books away. The books are in the, in the shelf. Now alone the Quran Sharif. Quran Sharif, you should be reading every day. But we so away from Deen because we don't we're not increasing our knowledge of ilm. If you can't read books, then every day make a habit to listen to talks of ulama. Increase your knowledge. Even if it's for 10 minutes before you go to sleep, listen to, if it's a one hour talk, okay, today inshallah, for half an hour I'm going to listen, and tomorrow I'm going to finish off the, the speech. Make a habit every night. Read something, a page if you can. Okay, that's the greatest sleeping pill. If you can't go to sleep, get a fiqh book, start reading it inshallah, you'll be snoring very soon. Okay. okay. But it, because it calms you down. <laughs> okay, ya Allah. And the greatest thing, and we need to revive this in our lives, is to read or to listen to the Holy Quran. If you, if you don't know how to read the Quran, if you don't have time to read the Quran, at least you've got time to listen to the Quran. Okay, you can ask brothers, okay, they'll make a CD for you. Surah Yasin, Surah Yamul, Surah Dukhan, all this small surah. Every, whilst you're going to work, play it in your car. You're dropping off your children, play it. That's a revision for them. Okay, they learn the surah. I read Tajweed as well. So if you don't have time to read the Quran, at least listen to the Quran. There are many brothers in our society, okay, because of you know, back in India, they didn't have a chance to go to a madrasa. They can't, unfortunately, they can't read Arabic. They can't read Quran. So for them, the, at least they should listen to the Quran. One Jews every day and try to listen to the entire Quran one month. At least do that. Okay? In that, that way, you are connected, connecting yourselves to the Holy Quran. But one thing to remember, change will not come overnight. It's a slow progress, step by step. Okay? If you can come to the masjid every day, come to the masjid every day. If you can't make it every day, after every two days, then start somewhere and then build it on. Don't think, inshallah, today from today, I've seen it. Okay? Sadim Bai is here, you know, Siraj Bai is there. What happens in Atikaf? All the Mu'takifin, all the youngsters in Atikaf, more than from tomorrow, you'll see him in Masjid. MashaAllah, brother. It's very good. That's a very good intention, of course. Okay? But they don't understand. It, it's a gradual change. It's not overnight thing. And once they start jumping into the deep end, they drown. It comes slowly. It's a gradual change, step by step. So what we need to do every time, every night, once a week, at least once a month, reflect, mashallah, upon your life. Evaluate yourself. Judge yourself. For your deeds on mizan. How much good deeds you've done, and how much of bad deeds you've done. Evaluate yourself. And then, you improve yourself. So reflect, evaluate, and improve. This is the method. 
And then what happens is very importantly try to connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very rarely, okay, when was the last time you prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say subhana rabbi al-a'la with the depths of your heart? When's the last time you connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As soon as you say Allah akbar, okay, you think about this, you think about that, it happens. I'm not perfect, no one's perfect. Okay, well at least make an effort to try, at least in salah, try to connect, even in one sajda if you can a day, one sajda, four seconds, five seconds long. Try to connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do that every day, you see tremendous change in your lives. Just connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... As I said, you need to practice daily. Yes, I know one, one of my, I probably mentioned this, I was um, working in Manchester, and there's a brother from Somalia, he's a Qadri Buchishi. The brothers who went to Morocco probably don't know the, the spiritual chain Buchishiya. A very amazing person. And this he has got seven children. Okay. And he's willed every day. Every day. He does La ilaha illallah 10,000 times. How many times? 10,000. How many times do we do? Rarely. Okay, when saying La ilaha illallah increases iman. Right, the intensity, the, the light, the ruhaniyah will increase. And I asked, how do you manage to do 10,000 said? I started off doing it 50 times a day. And increased every week. 50 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 500. Then thousand, and then he can't sleep without doing ten thousand a day, every day. And you know, and then whenever he says he sees the word Allah in Arabic, okay, Ya Allah, he's such an amazing person. As soon as he sees the word Allah, he gets like a fear that watched in his heart. As soon as he says Allah, he feels the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That happens slowly, it happens. Okay, but you have to put that effort in. You have to take that step. Okay, you've learned these things, but it's up to you now to implement it and practice it. Okay. And as I said before, the key to success is repentance. Whenever you do any sin, we are not masoom. We're not immune from sin. We are bound to sin. We will commit sin. We are weak. But remember, every time you commit a sin, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever the sin may be, backbite, hasad, jealousy, hubu shuhra, riya, suma'a. Okay, all these things, if you know, okay, you talk behind someone's back. Okay. People now they say, hey, what's any? So what? He's like that. I'm gonna say it. I can say in front of his face. Hey, who can not? What can you do? And this is people do that. This is haram. Firstly you're doing ghiba and then you're being you know you're proud about yourself. That I can say to his face. Double Una. Haram act. Okay. And, and stay away from the cause of sin. So repent. Stay away from the cause of sin. Inshallah. If these things, if you implement, inshallah, you see that you shall be walking the path of Sayyid Abu Bakr, Miski radiallahu ta'ala anhu.
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you maqam, not in front of people. You don't want status in front of people. Okay? You want that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Um ya fulan ibn fulan, stand. Oh, so and so, the son and so, so and so, go to Jannah. That will be success, the ultimate success. When your name will be uttered among all the people, I'm saying, Adam alayhi salam ila yawm al qiyamah, liyakuma fulan ibn fulan, Allah, when He will announce your name, and you say, Udkhul Jannah, enter Jannah, then you know people realize that this person is muflih. He has become successful. So pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to avoid sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to repent from our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be try and be firm on Surat al Mustaqim. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala avoid us and may Allah protect us from the whispers of the shayateen, inshallah. For five minutes, inshallah, we do very short dhikr. And then we'll finish off, inshallah.